Hi, this is Kevin Lawrence coming to you from University of North Carolina School of the Arts. And I'd like to talk a bit about playing our best. This is uh, an interesting phrase if you think about it. Taken literally, you could figure that when someone wishes you, you know, that you would play your best in the recital tomorrow, that after tomorrow, your whole life would be going downhill from there because you would play the very best playing of your whole life. Well, that's silly, of course. That's not what anybody means. But that idea can, can linger with you if you think of playing your best as some kind of peak experience that's rare and perhaps even unrepeatable. You can certainly see that the idea of playing our best comes with some anxiety, with some angst. In fact, some might talk about this subject as simply being about performance anxiety. Anxiety, you know, is actually a disorder. Uh, we don't have to think in those terms. I mean, there's something that's understandable about uh, the discomfort of having a goal to play very well, or perhaps our best. And I think it can, it can be good for us to look at uh, why we're worried about playing well, or our best, how we can get beyond that kind of worry. Years ago when I was a student, a younger student um, at Meadow Mount um, was excited because he was going to play the Sending Suite. The Sending Suite starts with a perpetual motion movement um, and he was very excited to tell everybody that he was going to play it faster than Heifetz and then all the girls would love him. And uh, I mean it was only a uh, 13 year old kid that could talk like this, everybody else, you know, just sort of smiled indulgently. But I, I thought years later, I've been thinking all this time, really, how many uh, hidden motivations there are for us when we play. Are we hoping for something, you know, for all the girls to love us? Are we hoping for our friends to look up to us? Are we hoping for our teacher's approval? Are we hoping that our parents will uh, support us? Uh, are we hoping even to win the audition? All these underlying motivations are with us when we play. And they can get in the way of our playing our best. So if you think about the desire to play well um, as not necessarily helpful when you perform, I mean, maybe it gets you practicing day after day, but but at a certain point when you go to play, it can really encourage you not to take any risks. It can help you to be less relaxed because you'll be afraid. You'll be afraid to miss things. You'll be afraid that uh, you know, the girls won't love you, that your parents won't support you, that your friends will uh, uh, reject you, that everybody will, instead of applauding at the end, they'll throw things at you. you I mean, it's silly, really, but, uh, but on some level, there is that kind of concern with how our playing is going to come across. So um, I, I think it's really wise for us to think when we Im imagine the experience of what some call nervousness, to think about what can underlie this and uh, to examine our own motivations uh, and then to reflect on the fact that we can't really jack ourselves up to a higher level of playing by simply wanting it more at the moment we perform. In fact, as I have already said, quite the opposite. If we do that, we'll be filled with fear. It'll be harder for us to move with grace uh, and ease and, and express what we want to express. So uh, there is then a, a, a movement of what the great viola teacher Karen Tuttle called surrender when we play. We, we, we're prepared as we're going to be when we walk out to play and we, we simply accept. I'm, I'm going to hear what I want to do inside. I'm going to hear this ideal performance and I'm going to let it unfold as well as I can given the practicing the preparation that I've done. So 
That's the, uh, the remote and the near uh, attitude that we need. The uh, remote attitude is, of course, understanding our motivation and, of course, also practicing well. We have to be realistic about how secure we are with our, our uh, piece that we're playing and we work on it as much as we can and then the, the, the preparation as we're about to play is that acceptance, that surrender. Uh, there was a, a beautiful aphorism that I heard as a student from a member of the Juilliard Quartet. Um, Music is a picture painted on a canvas of silence. And of course, on the obvious level, this means that if everybody in the audience is chatting, you know, you're not going to have much of a concert. But I think it's important to see this aphorism as referring to an inner silence. If you're quiet inside, then you'll hear this ideal performance that you want to convey. And it's only by quieting those fears and anxieties, ultimately desires for generally reactions of others, uh, only by quieting that, that we get a silent place from which music can well up in us and communicate to people who are listening. So uh, I would like to propose a little thought exercise for everybody. Um, it's silly, I suppose, and I've already hinted at it earlier in this presentation, but uh, sometime, at least a couple days before a performance, not right before, think about, in your imagination, a performance that's a disaster, just horrible. You walk out on the stage and you trip. Uh, you, you fall on your violin and it's destroyed. Somebody hands you another instrument and you have to play it, a fiddle you've never played before. And before you've played a couple lines, everybody starts laughing and they leave the hall. And, um, and then you, you know, walk out having somehow survived the ordeal. And, and then what happens? Uh, well, you go to sleep and the next morning you get up and eat breakfast and, you know, maybe you have another violin to practice since yours has been obliterated, but uh, you know, you start to practice again and you, your life goes on. Um, and then, you know, think about the kind of performance that you dream of without even maybe necessarily being aware. You, you walk out, out on the stage and people give you a standing ovation before you even tune. I mean, they, they are just so excited to hear you. And you know, people are throwing flowers and you know, you haven't even played yet. And then everything you play is just exquisite. And you can hear people in the audience saying, this really is uh, uh, more beautiful than Oistrakh and perhaps faster than Heifetz. And, uh, and of course, everybody's uh, ecstatic at the end. And you know, maybe you get a call from a uh, New York manager when, when it's over before the concert's even finished. Um, I mean, it's all very silly, but, but the point is, what happens then? Well, you go home and you go to sleep, and then the next morning you get up and you eat your breakfast and you, you practice, and maybe you call back the uh, New York manager. Um, but in any case, the, the point of this silly exercise is to let yourself see that your playing is an ongoing life work. It's not going to be that you play your best as one moment in your life that you can never attain again. You are going to, if you're serious about, about being a musician, you are going to look for playing that's beautiful all the time. When you practice, when you get ready to play, as you're on the stage playing, uh, it's part of a life's effort and calling. So I hope that helps you um, the next time you have to play, and I hope it helps you practice in a different way too, every day. Uh, so I wish you lots of happy practicing and beautiful music making too.